this country. Mr. John Banks. Mr. Speaker, in a previous life, I represented a very big farming constituency, the, the electorate of Wangrei. I don't even think today it is a farming constituency because it's come back onto the boundaries of the city. But I'll take a farmer in Mangawai Heads right now, and farmers in my day, those days, would love to listen on their crystal sets to what was going on in the parliament while they were milking their cows. And they'd invariably be milking their cows with their wife and maybe a son and a neighbour. And they'd be doing their best and they'd been up since 4 o'clock or 3.30 in the morning and it's now 10 to 5 at night and they're halfway through their herd of 350 cows. Now, they listen to the Labour Party member that's just resumed his seat and the eminent member from the Greens Party, who I'm sure is very knowledgeable on these things, but they're terribly confused. Well, I want to take the confusion out of this debate to this afternoon, because if we stopped milking cows in this country today, if there were no cows in this country today, if the farmer from Mangawai Heads with his wife, his son and a neighbour milking their 300 cows this afternoon weren't there and there were no cows being milked in this country, it wouldn't make any difference to the timing of the melting of the ice down in the Arctic. No difference at all, and that is the problem. But all I know is the farmer in Mangawai Heads, listening to this debate this afternoon on his crystal set, will be saying, what the Labour Party have told us today in this House is it's going to cost 320 to $350 million if this minister, this fine minister in the chair, didn't take the decision with the support from the ACT Party and the member for Epsom to say, tie ho, because the farming sector, the productive sector, the export sector of the New Zealand economy cannot take a $380, $400 million hit in 2013 and maybe more in 14, 15 and 17 because we want to lead the world with the milking of our cows so that we can stop uh, carbon emissions uh, on this earth. Now, I'm not going to debate that to this afternoon whether, uh, you know, a greenhouse uh, uh, warming and the Arctic ice, and I'm saddened about that because I'm an animal rights activist and greenhouse warming and the melting of the ice in the Arctic means a lot to me because it means a lot to that environment. But the problem we have here is the country is fundamentally broke. We're borrowing a billion dollars a month. We've borrowed 55 billion in the last three years. And the farming sector that you represent, Mr Deputy Speaker, from the bottom of the South Island, they are the people that are keeping this country afloat. And they really cannot take an impasse of a taxation like this in the absence that the rest of the world are not even following us. The rest of the world are not even following New Zealand let alone staying with us on the proposition. Australia, Canada, the United States and Britain are not even following us. And we're at the forefront of this and as a country. Now, going back to the Mangawai farmer, the Mangawai farmer lives in the, uh, in the uh, Kaipara uh, constituency of the local authority. And they've got more debt. Kaipara Council's got more debt per capita than a citizen living in Greece. And so that Mangawai farmer listening this afternoon on his crystal set to this debate in the parliament will say, what is going on here? We're struggling to make ends meet here. I'm, 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 a, I'm a dairy farmer. I don't own the property. I'm a share milker. I own these cows. I owe the bank $550,000. I'm struggling with my debt. And all I'm here from the parliamentary opposition is they want to put a tax on me milking my cows for the town supply of milk for, this, for the domestic sector and for exports to the rest of the world so we can pay the interest on the billion dollars a month we're borrowing because we're going broke slowly. Now, when Kyoto and the rest of the agreements that farmers and Mangawai heads don't really understand. You see, the farmer milking cows in your electorate, Mr Speaker, or in Mangawai heads, not many farmers in Epsom, clearly understand that all costs impact on their viability to be able to pay the bank the interest on the money they owe them for the cows that they're milking. And the cows that they're milking provide exports receipts for New Zealand to pay the interest 
on the money that we borrow, which is about a billion dollars a month for the last three years, and go, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Honourable John Banks, and going forward. Now, it's, a, it's got to be condensed into a simple debate. So this National Party Act government said at a Cabinet committee not so long ago, tie ho on 13, 2013. Let's tie ho on that. Let's make sure that the productive sector has an opportunity to pay its way, pay the debt, pay the interest on the billion dollars that we've been borrowing, and make our export sector competitive. Now, there's no evidence that I've seen, and I'd like to see from Dr Graham, who I respect knows more about this than I'll ever know, and I respect that, but what he probably also understands, that how can you quantify the emissions, carbon emissions, from that dairy farmer's 280 cows and Mangawai heads when we don't even know if one Jersey cow compared to another Jersey cow has the same level of admissions. And what are the admissions anyway? There's a 50% variance. All the work I've seen and the article I read in The Economist tells me that there can be up to a 50% difference uh, in the emissions by one cow to the next cow. And all I'm saying today in the Parliament from the constituency of Epsom, where there are no dairy farmers, is thank you, Mr Minister, Mr Trade Minister, for two things. The work you do on international trade and the gauntlet that you've picked up on emissions uh, uh, taxation in this country that was going to be an impost on that farmer from Mangawai Heads with his wife, his son and a neighbour down the road milking 280 cows night and morning for export receipts to pay for money on the interest that we're borrowing to fund the Crown account. It's the Crown account we're borrowing for every week and it's about funding. Now if we, were, if we had oil if we had oil on farms in Mangawai Heads, then maybe we could be leaders in carbon emissions on the global scene. But we don't have the oil. What we have is cow's milk and byproducts of cow's milk for the export sector to pay for this. And 380 to 400, it could be more. In 14, it could be 500 million. And if we had a Labor government, a Greens government, and a, and a New Zealand First government, by 20, it could be a billion dollars on the dairy farmers of New Zealand as a taxation for this. They simply can't afford it. And I speak on behalf of hard-working mums and dads up the metal road, behind the gates, up the path, into the sheds, all night, waking up, worrying how they're going to make ends meet, milking cows for milk, for production, for exports, to pay the money that we're borrowing for the Crown account so that we can live in a style that we've, be, haven't, that we've become accustomed to and can't afford. Now, all I'm saying is that when the economy comes right and the Crown account stops borrowing from the Chinese to fund it each week, each month, each year, then we might be able to afford to even have a debate like this. But these debates are costing $8,000 a minute in this Parliament to talk about taxing farmers, the productive sector of the New Zealand economy that's holding this country up. And I'll say one final thing, Mr Speaker, one final thing about emissions control and this national government's attitude towards it. I thank the national government for their sensible proposition that right now is not the time to be even having this discussion. Right now is not the time to be taxing farmers' emissions taxes. Right now is the time to be supporting the farming sector, the productive sector of the New Zealand economy, to pay the interest on the money that we're borrowing each week for the Crown account that we can't afford. Thank God for the farmers and Mr. 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 Uh, uh, Minister. Stay staunch on this. It's very important to the New Zealand productive sector. Stay staunch on it. Don't buckle to any of the SOPs because the ACT Party and the member for Epsom won't support silly MOPs, which means more taxes, more imposts, more costs on that farmer that I talked about that milks 280 cows and mungawa heads with his wife, son and the man from down the road. I call uh, Dennis O'Rourke.